Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're going to talk about how I have used the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly as a spend tracker to track my spending. I'll talk about that. So I'm not using it for budgeting per se, as so, so many people do. And there's lots of good videos out there of people who use it for budgeting, like Dave Ramsey style. That is not what I'm doing. So I am using the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly for spend tracking, for tracking my spending mainly for our big stores like groceries. And I will show that. So let's get into this. This is not going to take you through the whole Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner. I have a full review and walkthrough and I will post that video down below in the description box. So this is just gonna show you how I'm using it. It's not a review of the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly or a full walkthrough. Okay, so let's get into this. I put one of my zipper pouches from one of my life planners in here just to collect some important receipts from really big purchases because I just thought this is an easy place to remember where I have them. Those are like huge purchases, like things I wanna keep the whole year, like my son's new violin that we traded in and upgraded, like stuff like that for the most part. Okay, so this is the Deluxe Monthly by Erin Condren. Um, it is the colorful, and it is the calendar year for 2018. So I'm just using these boxes up here for tracking big expenditures for the month like a new violin or um, a heat check by the AC company to check our heating system or um, like new eyeglasses, like stuff like that because I can easily look back on the whole year and see like the bigger, like huge purchases that we had to make. And I just think it'll help me in terms of next year and in keeping track of that type of stuff and seeing when it went on and um, just helping me remember that type of stuff. So I did not start this until March. And let me also say that I have full reviews on this up. Um, I have reviewed this on Insta stories on Instagram. My Instagram is Amanda's favorites. And I have done um, a monthly recap on here every month since I started it. And that is saved up in my Insta stories highlight reel. So if you want to go back and watch that, and also I will continue to recap every single month through the end of this year on Instagram, and then I will save it on my Insta stories. So if you're not following my Instagram, I would love for you to join me there. That's where I check in every day. I feel like I can really get to know people um, on there who are on there a lot, who I can chat with. And it's also where I do my giveaways when I do those. And it's just a place where I am every day. And we can share and communicate and collaborate there. So join me on Instagram. And then I will continue to do these monthly check-ins every month on Instagram. And if you miss them, they will always be saved up in my Insta Stories highlight reel. Okay, so I started in March. And the reason why I wanted to do it in the Deluxe Monthly was because I thought this was a perfect setup for what I wanted to do. And I'll explain that. I did not need the calendar at all. For what I'm doing, I just... I don't need the calendar. So I did buy her tabs and stick them on here and I do talk about them. Um, they work great, but I wish they just came with tabs, but they've worked great. I do talk about them in my video review. I think they're too pricey and I think this planner should come with tabs, but the, <laughs> tabs, that's just my personal opinion. Okay, so I am just tracking because I've never done this before and I'm tracking our grocery spending at our three main stores for groceries, Sprout, Kroger, and Target. Target's a lot more than groceries, of course. Sometimes we'll pick up clothes there. We stock up on lots of stuff like lotion, shampoos, toilet papers, you know, napkins, paper plates. So Target's a lot more of that type of stuff. But these are the main places that I shop every month. Amazon, I'm not writing down the purchases because that's just... That's too nitty gritty for me. Amazon keeps track of that for me. So I just go in at the end of the month and add in my Amazon total for that month. I just go on Amazon and do that. I'm also keeping track of medical. I'm also just keeping track of any bigger things that I want to, like dates. If I make big purchases that really like aren't normal, like the container store, 
if and I was keeping track of my sonic drink purchases so that hopefully um, I can do less and less and that has worked so actually I've completely forgot you guys I did start this in February so I was wrong I started in January <gasps> I didn't even know that oh my goodness okay um all right so I was completely wrong I started this in January and I'm gonna have a full year this is what happens when you make too many planner videos, you guys. <laughs> you can't even remember your main planning. Okay, well, that's why I have this to remind me. All right, so I did start in January, and I'm tracking the same things in the same order. So I'm always putting the same thing in the same box. And what I do when I come home from Sprouts, I just write in my receipt really quick with the date. When I come home from Kroger, the same thing, Target. Amazon January I did start writing them in here and I was like number one most months all my Amazon purchases are not even going to fit in here and number two why go to that extra work it's just it's all tracked on Amazon really easily medical and then other big things I want to keep track of dates and drinks and um, extra big items and so just things I want to keep track of then what I do at the end of the month I total that whole column so that's my total for January for each one of these columns. Then I take that total to the back. And this is what's really gonna tell me something at the end of the year. Okay, so I use one of my little Erin Condren bookmarks in here. And um, I just made a really quick column thing here. I just did all my months, and then I did Sprouts, Kroger, Target, Amazon. So the totals for all of them, and then medical. Okay, so I did the totals for all of them, and then I did a blue number below each month. That is the total of Sprouts, Kroger, Target. Since those are my three groceries, you know, but also all the paper goods and, you know, home goods and stuff like that and cleaning. and. But I wanted to see what my Sprouts, Kroger, Target total is every month. So I add those three up then and I put the blue number below. And I have to say, it's kind of been shocking. I'm at the end of April right now, so I can't wait to total up April and see what it is. And you know what, guys? I actually thought that I wouldn't keep up with this. Like, I would do it for a year, and then I'd be like, okay, that'll just, it'll give me some information, make me more aware of my spending, and I will, I, I won't do it after this year. But you know what? Keeping track has been so simple. It's literally one of the simplest planning things I do. It takes the least amount of time. And it has been so eye-opening that I, I definitely think I'll be doing it and continuing it in 2019 and who knows how many more years. So I really wish I would have done this before this year. But nonetheless, so, you know, what does it tell me when, you know, my groceries from Sprouts, Kroger, and Target, those numbers jumped by $500. So January and February are close together at 9.52 and um, 1,067, and then this one jumps to 1,500. And to tell you the truth, because I didn't wanna go back and pull out all the receipts, I do keep them all in an envelope. You know, I can't really tell you what the heck happened, but it is nice to see it tracked on here. And I'll, as more months go on, I think I'll really be able to figure some things out from it. And it just makes me more aware because, um, you know, you can tell, I went to Target way more times that month, and I'm pretty sure that's where the $1,500 came from. But I didn't buy any extravagant things at Target. Like, I wasn't buying any decorating things. I wasn't buying any pillows. I wasn't, you know, buying new bedding. So it was just normal stock up stuff. But some months are like that at Target because I like to keep a huge stock of things like toilet paper and flour and Kleenex. Um, I'm a big person to keep a stock of all those things, lotions, um, toothpaste. So if my stock is running down and um, I'm going to stock up that month, then it's going to be, it's just going to be a lot more than other months. So I think that's what I can equate it to because this month, literally, I have not made a target run, which is crazy because I usually try to stick with one big target haul a month. I try. Um... Just because I honestly don't have time since I homeschool and run this channel and have another child in public school, it really comes down to time. If I didn't homeschool, I'd probably spend more money. I'm being really honest here. So if you look at January, I made two big Target hauls. 
So that's not really what I want to be doing, but that happened. February, I made three Target hauls, but one is um, smaller and online stocking up on some medicine and stuff. So it's really only two Target hauls. And March, I did really only two times to Target, no, three times, and the rest were online. So I mark them if they're online, just with online or OL, because that can tell me. And those are usually um, meds, like everyone in my family is on allergy medication, but me, um, like the Zizol and the nose spray, and yeah, and they're all seen by an allergy doctor. So, um, and my husband's getting allergy shots finally in his life right now. But the point is, lot those meds do cost us a good chunk every month, and I usually order them online because I can find better prices online because like they're always out of the 55 count box in the store, but that's the cheapest price one per pill and I can get it online. So that's where it comes down to. You guys probably don't even want to know all those details, but so here we are in April and we're on April 26th. So I'm kind of shocked at myself this month. I think I've been too busy to go to Target and I have not added up my Amazon purchases because we're not at the end of the month. Yeah, the day I'm filming this is April 26th, so that's where we are in the month. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I go to Sprouts pretty much every week. That's normal, and I think that I average about, you know, I think I can spend about 100 bucks there a week, but a lot of times it's less, like 66 71 but if I just think around 100 then, you know, it's within my budget. Kroger, I usually do, um, my plan is to do two click list orders there a month, and then only do one big Target trip for the things that I can't get at Kroger or I can get cheaper at Target and all my stock up items, cleaning, beauty items, personal hygiene items. I find that I can get cheaper at Target, especially with my 5%, um, even though it's more work for me because I have to go into the store and I probably do end up spending more money. But that's what I'm doing right now and I am not asking for any budgeting tips. Just putting this disclaimer out there. I'm not asking for cheaper stores I can shop at either. Um, I'm 40 years old. I've been doing this for a while. And I've got down what I like to do. So I am just spend tracking for the sake of tracking it. And I've never done that. So I can totally see like, wow, I've been doing good on my Sonic drinks this month <laughs> compared to my Sonic drinks last month. And... Then, um, you know, in February and in January. So it just, I can really keep track of things. I can remember when big purchases were and I can glance, you know, right back at the month. I think I'm going to feel good at the end of April with my totals compared to March. And I can see when they're all added up in the back, how it just balances out because what will happen is, you know, April will be a lot less than March and it'll balance out the spending $500 more per month than January and February. And it's going to be really nice at the end of the year to just glance down and see all the medical, all the Amazon totals, all the Target totals, Kroger, Sprouts totals. I'm really excited about that. Like, probably way more excited than I should be. Then I got this idea from someone and I just have never used it. So it's obviously not something I need, but I thought I might use it. When you order an item, you write down where the order's from, the estimated arrival date, and when it was delivered. Because it's true, you guys, sometimes things don't show up and I don't notice for a long time. It's only because usually it's something for one of my kids and they're saying like, where is that thing? And I'm like, oh yeah let me go check Amazon or let me check that site. It didn't come. And at one time our, our neighbor, um, he's just a single guy, so I'm not blaming him. He's, he's a nice guy, but he literally had one of our boxes for like two weeks and he didn't text and tell us or bring it over. And so we ended up having to get the company to send us out a whole nother pair of shoes. Zappos was so good about that. But then he all of a sudden texts us out of the blue and is like, you know, I got your package. Let me drop it on the porch. And I was thinking, oh, it must be something from today, you know. But no, it was something from like two weeks or more ago that he dropped on the porch. And we returned to them, of course. But this would be a nice chart if I kept track of it. I can see how it would help me because I could see 
you know, what I ordered and just when it was supposed to come. Um, or even if I didn't want to fill that in, at least what I ordered and then if it was delivered. So I could at least tell if things were delivered. Also, it might help me see like how many things I'm ordering because I'm not keeping track of that in my monthly. So that might, you know what, I might start keeping track of that in May. Just what I ordered and the total and then if it came. I don't see myself like writing in all the estimated arrival dates because I just don't see myself doing that. But anyway, so this is what I'm doing every month. And then in the monthly deluxe, I just skip the months. I don't do anything with them. And then May, I will write in my five categories and I will do it again and every month. And at the end of the year, I will definitely do another video to go all the way through this and um, just show you guys like, you know, how it went basically. And so I'm basically sharing this just so people can get this idea if it's something you want to do, because it honestly has brought so much to light for me. I cannot tell you. And even though I have not changed anything per se about budgeting in my life, it has made me spend less, I think, or at least be aware of it, be more aware of it. And I can remember before I would honestly be like, when's the last time I went to Kroger? I don't even know how many times did I go to Kroger this month? I don't know how many trips to Target did I make this month? I don't know. And it was frustrating because I would say, wow, we spent you know, more money this month than last month, but where, where do we spend that more money? I don't know. But now with this simple book, and it's so easy to keep track of, I can literally tell where the money went and it makes me feel better. We can't manage what we don't keep track of. We cannot, there's a saying for that and I can't think of it, but we can't manage um, if we don't keep track of something. So you have to First, keep track of something and then you can manage it. So I don't know why I can't think of that saying. It's really going to bother me. Um, if I do come up with it, I'll put it in the video right here. If I remember when I'm editing, but I might not. So that's the end of my budget notebook. There are pages back here that I am not using and that's okay with me. Um, I am using one of the pages here, but I'm not going to show that for channel expenses for everything I buy for my channel. Um, so yeah, I am using a page for that. So it's a good place to keep track of that too, since that will go on my taxes at the end of the year. And it does come with a pocket, the monthly deluxe. And then um, you can use any of your dashboards on here as well. But I love my monthly deluxe. I love my little tabbed bookmarks to keep track of where everything is in there. I like having my tabs, even though I think $8 is too much to spend on these when it should come with it. But I like having my tabs because I can easily flip to each month. So I hope that this helps someone out there to maybe um, be able to feel like they're getting control in their life by tracking their spending. So this is for people who, you know, don't want to budget every penny like that method, but you want to see where stuff is going. And that is what I'm doing. So I hope it helps someone out there. Follow me on Instagram if you want monthly updates. I will continue to give them on my Insta stories there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Happy planning. Or should I say, uh, no, not budgeting because this isn't budgeting. All right. Happy spend tracking. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.